Okay, we're back again with part number three, and today I'm joined by Matthias Kuhn from OpenGIS. Hi, Matthias. Hi, Tim. And um, I, th yeah, I think we're um, going to basically do a walkthrough of setting up QGIS to be coding standards compliant and um, pull request ready, right, Matthias? Yeah, right. Um... So I guess uh, the first couple of parts were about co getting QGIS to compile. So we are there that we can hit the hit some keys on the keyboard and create some nice patches for QGIS and new features or fixing bugs. So now the the next step uh, obviously is to get this into the QGIS code base, and uh, we do that through a pull request normally. And um, while these pull requests are open, there are plenty of checks run automatically in the background. Some of them really test the functionality, and uh, some of them test more or less the, the layout, the, the style of the code, uh, some indentation, some spacing, and so on. So um, this is things uh, that depend very much like on pro from project to project. Everybody does it a bit different, uh, where to put the line breaks, where to put the spaces. So um, in QGIS, we have some scripts in place that guarantee that it all looks the same. And we also have some helper tools around to make that happen. So let's start with the, with the very first thing, um, which is that we always run these scripts before, um, before we create a new commit. So Tim, if you could um, go to the QGIS repository or and after that to the command line too. Uh, to the to QGIS, the QGIS repository, repository in my browser? Do you mean in my browser or? Yeah, exactly. Okay, I just need to sanitize what <laughs> my browser quickly and just bring this one up. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, there we go. Uh, there we go. Um, QGIS slash QGIS. So basically, when um, when uh, TU would create a new um, pull request here, it would ask you automatically or propose to you automatically how to do this. Um, but you can also browse around in the source code um, and go to the folder .github. And in there is a uh, contributing, I guess, or pull request template. Um, I think the template is going to be when uh, you uh, actually okay. make No, it's the other this. one in this case. Uh, the... Exactly. So um, here we can see um, that uh, the first thing is like a script, the, uh, which is inside the QGIS source code, which um, prepares all the files that we edited to adhere to the coding standards of QGIS. And we can, as we can see, one line down, um, automatically set it up um, to run the pre-commit hook properly. Um, so if you copy this one. I'm just going to clear this title stuff off my screen there and yeah. maybe just make my font a bit bigger so it's easy to read. Yeah. And you run this command. Just anywhere, or do I need to be in a specific place? Like, Sorry? Uh, do I need to be in a specific place in the source tree, or can I run it anywhere? Um, I think you need to run it from here, but I just realized that um, there has been a change recently to this file, which you need to verify if it is actually <laughs> correct. Okay. Um, the current status of this. So. Should I hit go and see what happens? Yeah, just let it go and see what happens. That should be fine if you run it from there. Okay, I might have it already, but I'm going to just delete the old one. Um, uh, where was I? Because I don't know if that one is still even current or correct. Okay. Okay. So now um, there is a symbolic link from this uh, pre-commit hook directly to the script. So whenever we change something and um, then commit it, this script 
will he run? Um, so it's it's. I've just opened it up here so we can see a little bit what it's going to do. So it's running a style. Could you just explain a bit what a style will do? So a style is a is a, an application that you can give some parameters or a configuration file and that does exactly um, this coding style and adding line breaks, adding spaces everywhere to um, C++ code. And um, by using it this way, we'll all already be correctly parameterized for the way that QG expects your files to be. One thing um, to note here is that um, you need to have a style or you should have a style installed on your system. We used in the old days um, to compile a style uh, when you compile QGIS, but um, you can just install it through um, opt install or uh, DNF install or whatever your system uses to install a tool. Okay, I can see I've got it already installed, so I think I'm good to go there. Yeah. And I'll put the command that you would use to install it on Ubuntu. I think you need at least version 3.0 probably, but okay. I'm not completely sure. Yeah. Um, and just to explain the workflow, so that um, A style will run before your code actually gets committed in your um, commit log on your local repository, right? So it's a sort of... Yeah. Um, I think it's best to go through a commit uh, just after so maybe we mm -hmm. um, add a couple of lines or we just break uh, we, we some from the spacing somewhere yeah to see what it does and how it works great okay and then I can see it's cleaning up some temporary files maybe that's just housekeeping mm -hmm. stuff and exactly. then uh, there was some color diff what was the color diff about um, um We'll, we'll also see that after when we run it. Um, so if there is some spacing changes applied, then um, it will show okay. the user what it has just changed. Okay, what the bot did basically. We'll also, yes, it will also run um, auto pep 8 at mm -hmm. some point in here, I think. Or maybe that's done through uh, astyle.sh then or so, uh, another script ran from yeah, it must be somewhere else. I can't see it in here. Yeah. Okay, and this is all just the mechanics of how it's busy updating things and then it's doing some sub checks. Could you explain a bit about yeah. that? Um, that's another important thing. Um, these zip files are basically um, a definition of how methods that, in, that are defined in C++, how they are exposed to Python. And whenever we change, we add a new method somewhere in C++ code, we need to add it to a corresponding zip file just to tell the generator to also generate Python bindings, matching Python bindings for this new function that we introduced. And to this used to be a very hard to handle job, always forgotten and quite tricky to keep up to date. And what we nowadays with this um, CPFI script which is called from in here is that we scan all the changed C++ files and generate a corresponding um, zip file that will define how it is exposed to Python binding so basically less additional job for a developer to keep these zip files these additional separate uh, Python definitions up to date Great, and then you only need to manually edit the zip file if you want to have some special behavior that the generator doesn't You catch. cannot even do that anymore because they are just going to be overwritten on next uh, Okay, so do you, you, annotate, so, um, you annotate your C++ code to tell Sipify what you want it to do? And, um, exactly, yeah. yeah. So ownership is one of the classic examples there where we say this um, object is the ownership is from C++ to Python or the other way around or that's that's a lot of annotations inside the C++ code um, zip underscore transfer and similar macros in there and um, there are still some zip files which you can fine-tune but I guess this would be a bit out of scope for the discussion that we're having now okay so I think that that gives us a good overview of what it's gonna do um, so this 
what, what we shouldn't forget now is that we also need to install this uh, AutoPep8 script to be able to also prepare Python files that we modified. Is it a um, is it a uh, system package that I must install, or do I need to Pretty do it? Sure, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I see it over here, right? Python three AutoPep8. Like that. Yeah. Okay, I'll put all the commands that I've typed into the comments at the bottom of the video as well once we upload it. All right. Cool. So. We're going to break something. No, I think <laughs> we, we will check if what we did was actually um, was actually what we what we wanted, what we intended, and if it works. Mm -hmm. um, to do that, I would suggest that we just modify randomly a file somewhere, um, unless you have a good idea what new no. you want to load right now. No, um, um, just going to take something maybe from the app directory or. Yeah, sure. Uh, let's uh, modify the application. Well, what, is, what are we getting here? It's, uh, let's take this one, which is probably a good one to go and break. <laughs> yeah, let's um, break it. <laughs> All right, uh, I think I'm just going to find some actual code down here. Probably the file with the most haters in all of <laughs> in all of Qt's code base. File you found there. Okay, here we go. Yeah. I can break some things here. Let's get some spacing changes, yeah, maybe. Yeah, and, and add a debug message somewhere if you want. Um, so it's in new code. Uh, I'm not going to get syntax completion here. I should have done it in the other. Uh, let's see. Maybe I should switch to Kit Creator so it can help me uh, deal with my long lost coding skills here. So, yeah. um, it's GGIS. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. Um, I, Maybe uh, quickly make my font bigger just for the old folks in the room who can't read my small, small screen. Uh, uh, text editor. Like that, yeah. <laughs> That's more easy to see what's going on. So that's where I was breaking things. Yeah, nice. Well done. You already <laughs> see, um, well, maybe just continue there where it would do it by default um, and don't fix the indentation manually. So we'll uh, okay, 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 like that. Can't remember the flags for this. Yeah, you do the double quotes for C plus plus. Will a style catch that, or will it, give a, it shouldn't give a compilation error? Eh? Um, yeah, I, I don't think we should try to break it this way. <laughs> okay. How about like that? Cool. Okay, so. Um, we could submit a pull request um, now with exactly what we did here, and um, it will tell us immediately that, um, or pretty much pretty soon, um, that it does not, um, it doesn't follow the coding standards. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying, just so you just interrupt. So if I just commit this without all those A style checks, and I submit it onto uh, the Q just pull request queue, the same A style checks will basically run on. 
on the continuous integration infrastructure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you want to, I guess you want to store this status file. Uh, is it automatically saving? Automatically. Yeah, it's saved. And now in here, um, let's do a git status or a git diff. Okay, so I can see my one file has changed. Okay, and I can see, uh, did I lose my, yep, there I can see the spaces are gone and I can see my new line has been added. Yeah. Can I commit? Yeah, let's do that. Um, all right, so now the magic's going to happen. Let's hope so. Uh, or not. <laughs> okay, I've, well, this is a new machine, so I've done some very basic things. <laughs> Let me just t take care of that quickly. You know my name. Fair enough. Okay, I'll try again. Tim Sutton or oh, thank you. It's a French version of myself. <laughs> um, there we go. Good. Let's try again. Okay, I'm missing flip. Oh, one more. So this one will take care of switching Windows style line endings to uh -huh. uh, to, to Linux or Unix style line endings, I think. Um, now um, this script in there, the QG style script, um, is it possible that you have built with a style enabled before? Uh, it is possible, but probably on my Mac before, you know, because I've just copied this whole source tree over oh, from the Mac. Then just, then just uh, remove this QG style um, file. Uh, and we check it out again. A style on the system, so this will replace the um, QG style file. Just remove it. Where, where, so what is that? In the scripts, something. Or do the commit again. Uh, Oops, a style. So now I've got Marco standing. Yes, hello Marco, welcome. You're being recorded and <laughs> about to be. Yeah. Yes. Oh, sorry for <laughs> um, okay, like that. It's going to regenerate that script for us, did you say? Uh, no, oh wait. Um, you removed. I think you removed the wrong one then. Uh. You um, need to remove the uh, QGIS style. Just get that back again quickly. Very um, good. And um, now for the script slash QGIS, QGIS style. Okay, so I see. Yeah. Remove. yeah. Now that we have removed that, which was probably a Mac binary, we can try again. Do I need to check that? Is that generated that QGIS style? Or do I need to check it out again? This is a, this QGIS style that's not in the repository. Okay. So you or in um, yeah, that's not in the repository, so you cannot check it out. It okay. Compiled okay. At some point. All now, right. When you okay. did the commit, you want to explain to me what happened, Tim? Oh, I can see that it's m that it's going to put my spaces back in that I deleted, uh, and it's proposing to fix my indentation. So it's doing magic that saves me figuring out all that stuff myself. That's wonderful. So this is the diff of what is going to change, as, as you've explained before. And then when I press, how do I, I just go out? How do I? OK, so it's now, um, now before before you continue um, or uh, let's let's just uh, note one or two things um, that's quite important for this to understand. So, mm -hmm. yeah, if we go back to QG's QG creator, um, uh, it says that the file has changed on the disk. We can say yes to all what it's proposed. What it proposes here, 
uh, so it will show it updated with all the indentation fixed and everything is fine. But if we go back to the command line and we do a quick git status. Mm -hmm. It's ever written my original like source of that. Yeah. Um, so since you. Um, Okay, so we don't see the effect that I wanted to show that clearly mm -hmm. um, because you've been now uh, doing the git commit directly by um, with all the just one single command where you commit and you stage files in one single. Yes, um, okay, command. so if I did a git so add I first, it, git, git add mm -hmm. some files and then I add exactly the files that I want to add and then do a git commit after that as a separate command. Mm -hmm. And um, if you do it this way, then um, the staged files, so the files that you're going to commit, are not the updated ones. So the mm -hmm. git commit, when you do it, it will run the script, the script will do the changes and will fail. So git commit knows that something went wrong and it shouldn't continue. And now that the, ch that the files on your system are updated, um, you need to git add them again. again. Okay. So the next commit will really take the latest version. That's very. That's something very easy to miss where the system is not mm -hmm. perfect. Um, but if you're doing it the way that you're doing now, you're bypassing this uh, potential pitfall in a okay. very smart way. So just to have it mentioned. Okay. Good. Let's okay. go again. Okay. So uh, and yeah. So that's all um, reflects our changes. And so now I should be able to do a commit and not have any errors. This change is amazing. Great. So I could uh, kind of have that like queued ready for making a pull request from because at least I know the coding conventions are um, mm -hmm. as they should be. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there anything else on that side of things that one has to think about? Uh, what about the spell checker? And weren't there some other little magic things happening as well? Spell checker, I, I never actually ran, ran that on my machine. Or maybe I did on purpose at some point, but I don't have that integrated into my pre commit checks. Okay. Um, that's the kind of thing I normally, well, it happens once in a while that I just get informed by our continuous integration system that some spell checks are wrong. So I will just look okay. it up, um, when it happens actually and not already anticipate what could be go going wrong there. So what I, what I do, how I work, is really just with this script, pretty much. And not a lot of, not a lot other, not a lot of other things, and, and just rely on the continuous integration to do that. W something else that you could be doing, um, mm -hmm. if you go to Qt Creator, um, there are some uh, other things that we can configure in here. So I was going to suggest maybe let's um, let's stop recording this as one session and then we'll come back and do it as a second to just break it into two pieces because I think it's a nice oh, um, yeah. bite-sized yeah, chunk that we've, we've, we've covered there. Um, and then we'll be back in two minutes with, <laughs> with the next one. Um, yeah. <laughs> nice self-contained little video. So that's uh, part three, coding standards and uh, getting your commits um, organized properly. We'll see you in a few minutes for the next one.